Good morning. Happy Monday. There's a type of test that I want to encourage people to fail as often as they can. And that test is called A-B testing. The idea behind A-B testing is that you have two options, uh, which may or may not be a false binary, but you got two that you're working with. And there's a difference between the two. And the people running the test want to know whether one or the other would be chosen or preferred or desired or what have you. And then uh, if they're very clever, they'll find some way to have uh, test participants provide reasoning as well. And, and then here's where the pernicious part comes into play. Instead of only rewarding those who have the quote unquote right answer, they reward everybody for their participation. And this is why the pride thing gets really tricky because if people are already convinced that they have the right answer and then an A-B test shows up where one of the answers is what they already believe and then they emphatically provide feedback and they explain everything as to why they you know believe that thing why they're committed to it you know so on and so forth they've now given whoever's running that test a power over them <clears throat> that they have no idea what that person is going to use that power to do they have no idea and this is in, a, you know, in the midst of an era where people are supposed to be careful. People are supposed to be guarded. People are supposed to be cognizant of the power and influence that they give over their lives to other people, especially when you don't know who they are or what their, their goals are. And that, and that even becomes an A-B test in and of itself, where, where people are tested to say, well, do you think it's this people who is responsible for it? Or is it this people who are responsible for it? And why? You know, Tell us what you think. And, and unlike a math test when you were a child, you know, two plus two, you know, what is it, you know, or a history test, you know, what was the capital of this uh, ancient country, you know, that kind of stuff, where only the people who get the correct answer get the reward. With A-B testing, everybody gets a reward. Everybody who participates is rewarded for their participation because that's where the good data comes from. It's not the data provided back to the individual. Did you choose right or wrong? It's, did you give us enough information to help us iterate the test and run it again? Slightly different, slightly more refined. Don't pass that test. Fail it miserably. Don't give people power over you. And, and let me explain how this can be made even worse. Those higher intellectual functions that we have, they don't operate great when we are under duress, when we are stressed, when we are tired, when we are weary, all that kind of thing. And guess what a lot of people are right now because of all the circumstances that are going on? They're tired, they're frustrated, they're worn out. And so their capacity to engage in higher intellectual functions, to access that part of our capacity where you judge a circumstance based on multiple variables instead of just one or two, where you try and actually account for subtleties instead of just responding out of instinct. If people can't do that, then their responses are going to get even easier and easier to predict. People aren't going to be in, you know, responding in complicated fashions. They're going to be fight or flight, for example, is one set of uh, extremes. Are you going to fight this or are you going to flight? Are you going to fly away from it? You know, what's the instinct that you as an individual are going to manifest in response to the stimulus? And then your name and the data gets put in a computer in a database somewhere. And the people who run the test then figure, okay, well, the next time we run the test, if we, if we iterate this way, then we'll be able to activate these people. If we iterate that way, then we'll be able to activate those people, and so on and so forth. Fail these tests. When you have an opportunity to express yourself, be very careful about who you are expressing it to. Because when you explain yourself, when you explain why you approach a topic a certain way, why you believe a certain way, and the follow-on isn't an immediate circumstance where such choices matter. You know, again, like math. You know, if you're in a math test, you're, you're going to be graded on how well you did the math. But if you're in A-B testing, you're graded on how well you participated. And your passions, either way, again, they, they can be exploited. Your pride will be leveraged against you. Your emotional state, your, your being in a state of duress and all that kind of stuff, is going to be used to try and get to the pattern that you conform to, to understand how you're going to respond and then use that information to achieve something. What it is, I don't know. Who it is is doing it, I don't know. But fail that test, 
recognize it and fail it. Protect why you do anything. This is made easier if the reason you do something isn't internal in the first place. But even for those who, who don't have a belief in the divine, in something supernatural, even if all you've got is the flesh and bone and the blood that flows through your veins, keep something secret. Don't let your pride be exploited to give away everything that matters to you. Because that's what people are doing now. They're not doing it to collect information on how to make their lives better, but how to control your life, life more effectively. Fail those tests. Don't pass the A-B test. Give your life to Christ if you don't know how to do that. Because here's the thing. If you're being guided by God, then you're not going to be driven by those emotions. You're not going to be driven by those instincts. You're not going to be driven by that fear. You're going to be driven by something else completely. You know, that's, that's how Stephen, one of the first martyrs, stared death in the face. And in the face of death, chose to adhere to the truth instead of saving his own skin. All throughout history, we see martyrs, people who should have made a different choice if the material was all that mattered, but instead they chose to obey God instead. And even if that gets to be the predictable thing, it'd rather be, I'd rather be damned for my obedience to God, for my adherence to what he has asked of me, than for anything else. I'd rather be hated and controlled and manipulated because I chose to be obedient to God than anything else. There should be no other feature about me that is so defining and so distinct and so strong that anything else could be used against me, that anything else could be used to try and control or, or manipulate me. If you don't know who Jesus Christ is, pray. Study the scriptures. It'll come. It's not going to be like a, a, a magic you know, spell. There's not like one prayer that magically makes it happen for everybody but you got to you got to be looking and you got to be guarding you got to be you got to be thinking about what you're doing and not just responding on instinct not just letting the baser desires run you they're going to be there it's it's going to you know emotions are going to be there that's not going to be what you control that's the deceit to try and control the input don't do that what you're controlling is your output, what you choose to do with those things, what you choose to do in response to testing. Fail the A-B. Don't take the opportunity to give your opinion. And especially be careful when whoever is asking is not someone you know. It's not someone that you know you can trust with the information that's being provided. Again, pray, study scripture, give your life to Christ, let something bigger than you, outside of you, be what drives you. And you will be insulated from this and so much more. Take care. God bless.